Apple is rethinking their entire iPhone 15 lineup next year, and it's due to some catastrophe in the current iPhone 14 lineup, specifically with the iPhone 14 Plus, which is basically like the regular iPhone 14, but with a larger display. And apparently the sales have been so bad that Apple is seriously concerned about releasing the iPhone 15 Plus next year in a similar way. So they have to rethink the entire lineup and some think that it might even get canceled altogether, but we just got a new report from a Korean blogger saying that Apple is rethinking it in a couple of ways and they're basically exploring two separate options. But before I get into revealing what those two are, I have to talk about why I think the iPhone 14 Plus failed so badly, so let's get right into it. First of all, in my opinion, they made a huge mistake by delaying the release of the iPhone 14 Plus because it was delayed almost by a month, so by the time it was released, a lot of people already purchased one of the other 14 models, so the 14 Plus was kind of lost in terms of the hype, and we even noticed that on our own channel where the 14 Plus videos did not do as well in terms of the views. Another big problem is the price. It starts at $900, and at that price, you're so close to the iPhone 14 Pro, and the issue is that the Pro model is just so much better. Apple has been doing an excellent job by giving even more and better features to the Pro models and marketing the Pros much better as well, even down to just the naming. Pro sounds a lot better than Plus. But on top of that, one of the biggest things that came to the Pro models is the new Dynamic Island, which is seeing the notch finally get removed after so many years since the iPhone 10. So when you look at the 14 Plus, it has a notch, and the notchless Dynamic Island Pro models look just so much better and more modern. So paying $900 for a notched phone in 2022 is extremely expensive, especially when you look at the other Android competition, which basically no longer have notches. On top of that, with the 14 Plus, you're stuck with only two cameras, which means that you don't get the telephoto camera, which can be very helpful, like on the Pro models. And this year's Pro models also got a brand new 48 megapixel camera with Pro Raw that looks absolutely incredible, so sharp and detailed, and you're missing out on that with the 14 plus. Now, in my opinion, there is another reason, which is basically the oncoming recession, where people are trying to spend less money and budget more. Now, the interesting thing is that with the Pro models, specifically the 14 Pro Max, which outsold the rest of the models by far, I think with that model, it's kind of tuned towards the more wealthier clients where they might not be impacted by the recession as much. So if somebody is looking to buy one of the regular models to save money, they might as well just get the 6.1 inch regular iPhone 14 for $800 instead of going up to that $900 price. Now, another reason is that the people who are buying the Pro models are more likely familiar with the tech industry. They know how to pre-order their iPhone to get it quickly. And the people that are going for the regular iPhone models, more likely than not, they're probably going into a retail store, they pick it up, they use it, then they try out the 14 Plus and it feels massive because they've been used to these smaller phones. So that might be another reason why they think it's not worth spending another hundred dollars on top for such a huge phone that might be uncomfortable to use. But then getting even deeper, another reason is that the lineup is kind of confusing compared to how it used to be. Before, you would get one iPhone every single year, and then with the iPhone 6, you would get a larger iPhone 6 Plus, so you had the choice between two, and then they set it up to three with the iPhone XR which was budget focused, now we have four ever since the minis came online and the minis didn't perform well, but it looks like the 14 plus is doing even worse. So with four iPhones in the lineup, one of them is bound to perform very badly because you just have so many choices. So with that said, in my opinion, Apple should just go back to three iPhones. You get the regular iPhone 15, then the 15 Pro and Pro Max, or maybe even the 
15 Ultra, which is one of the scenarios that Apple is exploring according to the Korean blogger. Apparently, Apple could be working on an iPhone 15 Ultra, which will basically be a Pro Max, but with extra features added on top that are better and more different compared to the regular Pro model, and that's gonna be really nice because it's called the 15 Ultra, so it sounds amazing, just like the Apple Watch Ultra, which did very well in sales because it's $800, much more expensive, but it's a completely different design and it sounds awesome. So if Apple does that with the 15 Ultra, it's gonna be a very good seller, and that'll likely make the iPhone 15 Plus, if it does come out, even worse in terms of sales. So that's another option to differentiate between the pro models and the lower end models, basically to make it maybe an even more expensive model. So maybe the pro models and the ultra will be more expensive by a hundred or even more dollars. And then in that case, maybe it'll help the 15 plus do a little bit better because there's a bigger price difference between the $900 15 plus and the much more expensive pro models coming next year. Now the other option that the Korean blogger gave was for Apple to reduce the price of the 15 plus. So instead of $900, it would now be, let's say $850. Now that gives it a bigger difference between the 15 plus at 850 and the pro models and maybe the ultra. So that might make it worth it to go for that larger 15 plus. And if you think about it, it's only going to be $50 more expensive than the 15. So paying 50 bucks for a much larger display and battery would it actually be a great idea and very worth it. Now the hardest thing about all of this is that Apple likely had a lot of pressure in terms of profit margins with the current iPhone 14 lineup. And that is actually why I think Apple kept the regular iPhone 14 with the old A15 chip because that helped them save some money and get higher profit margins. Because in my opinion, all of the issues with lockdowns and all the protests in China and everything else has made it more difficult to have good profit margins because now they have to pay more money to Foxconn because Foxconn has to pay their workers more money to stay there. Plus all the supply chain issues with shipping prices and everything else, Apple likely was pressured into giving the iPhone 14 models the older chip. And I think that's gonna keep going forward into the future. But with all of this said and wrapped up, I think the best bet is for Apple to admit that they were wrong with the 14 plus and next year make it more simple so they can save some money just give us the iPhone 15 for $800 and then the Pro and Pro Max or Ultra that's gonna simplify the lineup and I think it's gonna help in terms of sales with people being less confused and more likely to go for that new Pro Max or Ultra because that plus model is no longer there I think that's the best bet for Apple to increase their revenues and profit profit margins and average sale pricing. Now, if you think I'm totally wrong, let me know down in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed this video, then click the circle above to subscribe. And if you're interested in just buying one of the iPhone 14 models, I'll tag using the YouTube product tagging feature down below the model that I recommend right now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.